Hello everyone, we are Group 12, and today we will focus on discussing the concept of homophily in social networks. So, homophily, what is that? Think about your circle of friends for a moment. Let us make a guess here. They are probably around the same age as you, share the same hobbies, and probably also have other similar interests. That, in essence, is homophily. It is the principle that a contact between similar people occurs at a higher rate than among dissimilar people. Or, in simple terms, people love those who are like themselves. Although the term homophily originates from sociology, it is nowadays commonly used in network studies. There are mainly two types of homophily, induced homophily and choice homophily. Induced homophily suggests that sheer group composition leads to homophily. For example, by design, majority of school children in a class are around the same age, because there are hardly any students from a different age. By chance alone, they are more likely to connect with other students of the same age group. Choice homophily, on the other hand, suggests that individuals will start actively seek out and find others who are similar to themselves and form ties with them. So, even with a fairly high presence of a different other in a group, individuals were still likely to form ties with similar others. Coming back to the age example, even in a setting where people from different age groups are present, on the playground for example, students will seek out to play with students of the same age. Given the widespread nature of this phenomenon, you want to ask yourselves, why people love those who are like themselves? Isn't there a saying that opposite attracts, like a magnet? Wrong. There are many causes of homophily. First, geographical reasons indicate that it takes more energy to connect to those who are far away than those who are readily available. Secondly, family ties. That's right, the family web produces close and frequent contacts and generates strong connections. Organizational policies such as school, occupation, and other informal roles also contribute to induce homophily. Furthermore, cognitive process suggests that people who have demographic similarities tend to own shared knowledge and have a greater ease of communication. So, how can we measure homophily in a network? Let's consider another example showing friendship patterns between young adults and their music taste. If homophily is present, we would expect more friendship links between individuals who like the same music. To test for homophily, one needs to look at the case if friendship links would be created completely at random. In other words, no bias at all. If we find a significant amount of individuals having a proportional higher fraction of friends with the same music type than expected by pure chance, Voila! Homophily is present! That is the end of our video. Take a look at the people around you. You might now have a better understanding why they are there.